What's up, everybody? Just got done at the Win a Case event down at Dark Side Games. We got first place playing Ochako 2. I'm going to have that deck list for you guys in just a second. We ended up with, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's like four total booster boxes. We're going to open some some packs up. We're going to split out the rares, you know, make sure everybody gets what they need. But uh, yeah, I'll have the Ochako 2 deck list. It's not what you expect, even though it's the death symbol. So check it out, guys. What What's up my hero universe and as the title implies this is the deck I got first place at our local win a case event um, It is Ochako 2 and there's a couple little interesting things about this deck um, First off, I want to say thank you to dark side games for hosting the event keeping our local strong uh, I think we managed to get like 30 people for the case event. So someone said 30. I don't know what the full total is but um it was a great time uh i played some pretty interesting decks uh so, you know i played a tokoyami and i got paired into a momo so there's definitely people bringing like some some meta relevant decks brandon jones was on water asui again so i didn't want to bring like a funny haha -ha meme deck um and unfortunately i spent a lot of time uh, looking at DLC characters for this, it's kind of interesting how I arrived on this deck decision because I was looking at Tiger, someone said Extendo Hair Tiger out in the universe, and I'm a huge fan of Extendo Hair, and Tiger's a lot of fun, you know, you get a lot of cantrip attacks, you get a lot of card movement for a five-hander, so that was a deck I was working on, five-hand size Tiger with Extendo Hair. And then the other deck I had looked at was actually Ragdoll with Hulking Grimace. Um, now I know this seems kind of weird because Ragdoll is not a five-hander in this character. Uh, you know, this card pretty much has one ability that says only playable if your printed hand size is five or less. However, the thought process in my head was if I'm going to search my deck for one card once per game, it should be low input. It should be situationally incredibly useful. And so the idea was, well, if I get my opponent to a place where Hulking Grimace is like a guaranteed lethal, which is a lot, it probably means checking it on like an eight or a nine or something like that. But look, you know, in, in a very average sort of turn flow, my opponent might leave themselves open to just a seven mid for 10, you know, plus whatever stat bonuses you can put on it so that was the idea you know and then and, and the or sorry not seven in ragdoll it would be nine speed right so the idea was like i can once per game just have a nine mid for ten that seemed really strong um but i wasn't feeling too good about everything around the deck i wasn't feeling too good about other searchable options things like that right so um but because of those two play styles, because of those two things, I was I started to think, I was like, man, if I could just play Hulking Grimace and Tiger, that'd be tight. <laughs> you know, if I could have Hulking Grimace as like my my poke turns, my setups for things like Extendo Hair, that'd be really cool. And then I thought, okay, well, who's the actual best Hulking Grimace user? And it turned out to be Ochako 2. Um, and so I put the, the deck together like the morning of. I spent all night trying to make ragdoll decks. I spent all night trying to make tiger decks. And finally at like five or six in the morning, I came up with this list. And it was originally the all mids, villainous waylay, gale force punch kind of a thing. Um, but the two things that that really stuck out to me was how much I really wanted Excited for Blood. Um, wanting to play Excited for Blood and just not worry about things. And also, if you look at like the spam count, it's pretty good for a five-hander. Um, we're at like 13 ones and zeros, I think, or 12 ones and zeros. So <clears throat> that's pretty, you know, it's not terrible for a, a 53 card deck. Um, but as a five-hander, since you're not gonna build five cards a lot, you really want like impactful two difficulties. Um, and, and three difficulties in the case of Excited for Blood. So, I don't know. I just really didn't want to play eight two checks in also a deck that runs Excited for Blood. Um, and I thought about siding them because, you know, those cards are really popular for a reason. There are, like, I think against a Momo, instead of being a Racerhead, I might actually prefer to just be Ochako with Gale Force Punch. So, uh, 
I could definitely see a world where I side those cards, but as far as like running out Ochako's offense, typically you're just going to be overwhelming them early on in the game. <clears throat> and it's not really going to come down to what blocks they had available, <laughs> you know? And, and I, again, I, I think that Wele is just like a fairly easy card to play around. And a lot of the Ochakos I've played against, the reason I survive their absolute best nutty hands, you know, the hands that they draw is because they check twos against me. And it only takes like one early block once they check a two on that first attack. So that was the decision not to run I, what I think is now the most common attack lineup, even if it is statistically the strongest. Let's talk about the attacks. Uh, the four Hulk and Grimace, this is the reason to play the deck right now, especially, you know, if it effectively replaced Gale Force in this list. Um, Sun Death Assault is probably the weirdo inclusion in this list. It's effectively six mid. So when I play Ochako, all I care about is fast base speed. That's all I'm looking for. Literally, I don't give a single shit about like anything else on this card, as long as it has respectable damage and it has at least four speed, it probably makes it into this deck. Um, and you might be saying, well, this is a three speed attack, but if your rival tries to block this attack with a mid block, their check gets minus three. So it's effectively a six mid if you want to full block. Um, on top of that, because of the way that Ochako works, she's actually incredibly good at getting momentum because she's just so laser focused on actually hitting you, right? Like she doesn't really care about other card movement. She's not about setting up her board state. It's relatively easy to get one momentum. Getting two momentum is not the hardest thing. And every single time I played this card, it was either like too fast for lethal or I had the two momentum and got to drain my opponent down to like one life. There was actually a game I played against an Ingenium who sighted into Ida, and uh, both games, I they were at six life when I played this and drained them to one. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I thought this was an interesting inclusion. I never got more than two momentum at a single time, I don't think. So uh, I might replace this with an EX attack. Uh, I thought it was pretty neat. So it, it, it just fit the role of being fast and mid and that's what we were all about. Uh, speaking of fast and mid, we had Long Lasting Explosion. This is just a really neat card. <laughs> it's just statted so well and does pretty much what this character wants, which is put more stats on things. This was almost never my lead off attack. I would try to lead off with at least like a stun one or, you know, the stun two attacks uh, and just kind of eat that extra difficulty on the long lasting because the plus two to the check bonus is so strong. But realistically, I just really need to hit you with something. And the thing I want to hit you with the most is actually turn to dust. Uh, getting stun four out of a single card is incredibly strong. Uh, using this to activate Excited for Blood early on before finding out if my opponent can block and things like that was really good. Yeah, just super strong with the stun. This is EX. I, I pressed the EX button every time I had momentum. You know, every time it had even the slight, like even if I know it's getting blocked because I'm putting it from like three speed to five speed, you know, I uh, stressing that extra foundation on my opponent early on in the turn was super helpful. This was probably the actual MVP. Like, Hulk and Grimace really did kill people, but uh, Turn to Dust is what enabled it a lot of the time. And then, of course, you have Stun Grenade, which is just mill and hit, hope you hit an attack. I whiffed on it only twice during the night, um, which was really nice. Normally, I whiff on effects like this a lot, but you got to trust it, you know? Like, statistically, there's not much better for the slot. Statistically, this is just, like, the best card advantage card. Um, this is like the best stun as a four div, and so you got to run it. And then quick draw, this is the really cute tech that I think every Ochako 2 should be running. What kind of pushes you towards these all mid builds is I'm going to put a three on top of your deck. And the vast majority of games I played this in, I did not kill my opponent. They did not check that card. They did not block the quick draw and I gave them an attack but it was completely fine because it was turn two or turn three. I was still at full life. My games never went that long. Um, and so I was really afraid that I was gonna misplay and just hand my opponent like a free attack and not kill them and, and give them like, you know, effectively more tempo on their turn, but it never turned out that way. I think it got blocked at all of one time throughout the event. 
Um, so it only it, it only failed to draw me a card like exactly one time. And as far as pushing through damage goes, I guess training weights might be spicy. I don't I don't see this in every deck list, and I don't think it goes in every deck list, but considering the style of deck this was, getting plus one, plus two, plus three damage, like I draw two attacks, I really want to expect to play three attacks, and getting, you know, a total of six damage over three attacks is really strong, especially since we typically aren't committing foundations to pass our checks, right? Like you know, our first attack, we hopefully pass. Our second attack, if they block the first one, we probably commit one or two cards, whatever. But then once we hit them, we get a free attack after that. So I always had the foundations to commit for training weights. You know, that extra damage did allow me to uh, win a game against Momo because that is the deck that I had to put together that three attack, that four attack string where, you know, it's like turn to dust, long lasting, stun grenade, stun grenade, you know, and if the long lasting doesn't make the first stun grenade lethal, they don't have to block it anyways. And then if it's not exactly stun grenade, I don't draw the stun grenade off the top that is lethal, but only because the training weights supplements the long last, you know what I mean? Like it, it was, it was some pretty cool stuff, but that was pretty much the only like four attack string I had to play the whole event. And it only was possible because of training weights. So anyways, guys, that's the deck list. It's pretty much just your standard Ochako 2 flavor, except I don't check bad. I don't play the bad checks. I think you get just as much mileage out of just trying to hit people with regular attacks than you do trying to sleaze them out with Gale Force and things like that. So uh, basically we take way less risk on our turns one and two, which allow us to effortlessly play our turns you know three and four but let me know what you guys think down in the comments do you win games with ochaka 2 not playing villainous waylay and gale force punch uh do you have a different lineup that is not just fury mids that has worked for you in ochaka 2 let me know down in the comments because this is not a deck i was expecting to find myself playing but i was really attracted to the hulking grimace button you can't really mess with uh during the block step was just a, a lot of fun. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.